Good morning, everybody. Live from Terre Haute, Indiana. It's the Bison Media Blog pregame show as we get set for North Dakota State and Indiana State. Along with Jeff Kolbeck and Eric Peterson, I'm Dom Izzo as we get set for what should be a really interesting game today. Thanks for stopping on camera, sir. As we get ready for NDSU and Indiana State matching up here this afternoon. This has been a really wild week in Bison football, stemming from the loss to South Dakota last Saturday, then the fact that Carson Wentz is now out for the remainder of the season. What are we going to see today? Well, that's a good question. With Ethan Stick getting his first start at quarterback, he's a redshirt freshman, came here with the reputation of, okay, this guy is going to drive the yep. bus. But you thought maybe it'd start next year, yep. not this year. But, you know, what are we going to see in Easton Stick? Is he going to throw the ball? Is he going to use his legs? I mean, I think those are, all, those are all questions that Indiana State's probably asking themselves, too. It's a really bizarre week, Big E. We've seen a little bit of Easton Stick. Uh, just running the football in that game against Weber State, but now he's going to be handled the keys to what's been a really prolific offense so far in 2015. I think it's going to be interesting for both teams. Like Jeff said, what does Indiana State, how do you prepare for a guy you don't have much film on? If you're NDSU, yeah. how much of the offense do you throw out there right away? Do you kind of limit it to let him get his feet wet, or do you just like throw it all out there to see what happens and see what he can do, maybe take a deep shot early on in the game to, to take some of the pressure off? Let's go back here. After the loss to South Dakota, you wrote the season going maybe into chaos. Does it still feel like that today here for where they lace this up at noon? Well, I think it's a, a swing game, certainly, yeah. because you have a team who slipped at Montana, and that was defensive uh, letdown in, in a several areas. And then it came back, and you after after the third game in a row, you know, the Weber UND game, and then, and then South, South Dakota, Dakota State, State. Yeah. with the defense, the way it handled the run, you think, okay, this defense is just as yep. good as last year. Yep. Then also Northern Iowa starts running its quarterbacks. And then last week you had a guy named Ryan Sager who hadn't really done much all year. At the game of his life. Started getting first yeah. downs left and right yeah. with the quarterback position. Quarterback run, the first four quarterbacks had minus 51 yards rushing combined. The last two, well over 200. What do you see about that? that is that... A, yeah, young what team, a young team, an inconsistent team. What, what's the best way to describe of what's happened the last week and a half? Team that just misses too many assignments right now. It's the consistency. I think the physical part is there, but how many times in the last four or five years did you see them miss a gap right. or miss a fit or... You know, if somebody messed up, there always seemed to be somebody there who made that one-on-one -on -one tackle in the open field. They're not getting that one-on-one -on -one tackle in the open field. There seems to be more running lanes there. And even the last, you talk about the last two weeks, they finally faced more running quarterbacks. I think those first four games, none of those guys were really runners. Maybe Keaton Studgard from UND, but, you know, Zach Luhan from South Dakota no. State wasn't really a running quarterback. Jadrian Clark from Weber State maybe a little bit. And Brady, Brady Gustafson was definitely was not a running quarterback. <laughs> yeah. So I think it started with Aaron Bailey in that second half of that game with his athletic talent really exploiting him in that and quarterback. Cole Morgan, game. though, had some success, he and he's not a running quarterback. No. But you saw what happened when you got a running quarterback. Right. They turned into touchdowns. Cole Morgan had like a 15 or 20 yard run, which was alarming from you said a guy wasn't a running quarterback, but you, when you got a true athlete in there at quarterback, it really gave him problems. Let's go back to what happened on Saturday. Carson Wentz breaking his throwing wrist on the second series of the game when he was rolling out of the pocket. It was a third down play, Jeff. He tried to hit RJ Erzendowski downfield, nearly got picked off as he was bracing his fall. That's where the injury happened. Remarkably, he threw a beautiful ball to Darius Shepard for a touchdown and a laser beam to Andrew Bonnet for another score. The fact that he played as well as he did at the end of the first half, but he said to us yesterday, it got worse as the game went along. I think it goes to show you the adrenaline that these guys yeah, go right. through when they're on the playing field. When they get hurt, you know, they're always going to shrug it off as a sprain. It'll get better, and it'll get better. Even the coaches didn't know. You, know, you talked to Randy Hedberg. He had no idea. All of a sudden, he gets up on Sunday, and I think he gets alerted that, oh, Carson Something's may be that, hurt. Not right. yeah. And the next thing you know, he's out for the year. Yeah. Just think what those guys went through. How much do you think this hurts his chances at the next level? Does it? Yeah, I've, how many? Hey, how many? We've heard that all week, right? I mean, everybody wants to know. That, well, this, yeah. I mean, that's a question of the week. Because that's all we've heard is he's going to get drafted. Now, you think it might. I don't I think do. it will, and I don't think it will for this reason. I think there's enough body of work with Carson Wentz over the last year and a half. I think he's thrown enough passes. He led his team to a national title last year. I think they look at that. And and what is an NFL quarterback when it comes to prospects? you got to do well in the combine. I think the senior bowl, if he gets in that, 
that. If yep. he has a good week of practice there, I don't think it affects him at all. Think, Long term, I don't think it does. Maybe a little bit draft status, draft maybe stock, he slides a little bit. That's but what I'm saying. Maybe there's teams out there are glad this has happened, so he doesn't continue to yeah, have they a great season. They kind of hide him, right? They kind of yeah, hide him. They're like, all right, we saw, we saw enough, and yeah. now he's not going to have like yeah. a spectacular finish to his senior season and put him on the radar of more teams. So I think there's probably teams out there that already like him, and you know, granted the surgery goes well, it doesn't seem like anything major. I think he's going to be fine. I don't think long term it's going to hurt him at all as, as NFL prospect. Does he play again for the Bison? I, I think they have to reach Frisco. I do. And, and talking to the medical people and, and, and doctors that I know, it's to the bone. It's a bone right. that really doesn't get a lot of blood flow, which really kind of hurts the healing process. He called it a tricky healer. I've heard it's called a slow healer. And um, right. I think they have to reach Frisco before he has a chance to play again. Think? Well, the other thing, if it was in his opposite wrist, yeah, maybe a little earlier, but it's not only is it a tricky healer, like that's going to be used right away. I mean, that's in your throwing wrist. So yes. I, I agree with Co maybe the se at semifinals at the earliest, maybe. at the yeah. earliest. But at that point, if you get to that point, that probably tells you Easton Stick is playing, is playing really pretty well. well. Yeah. And then I, Grant is an NFL prospect, not a, but you bring a guy in cold yeah. who hasn't played for six weeks as opposed to a guy who's been playing well. So. They got a lot of stuff to do before they get to that point. So I, I don't think they're worried about that bridge right about now. Big E's going to rejoin us later in the show, of course, for his prediction segment. We won't want to miss that. Of course, we'll have an injury update and much more about Indiana State. We actually got to talk about the football team that the Bison are playing here today. We'll take a break. We come back. NDSU Athletic Director Matt Larson will join us live here on the set to talk about the last week, what's been going on with NDSU, and also get an update on the Shack. They're getting close uh, up there on the north side of town. That's next as the Bison Media Blog pregame show rolls on live from Terry. More plays, more coverage, more sports. Stay ahead of the game. Get your sports fix with Sports Sunday. Sunday nights at 1035. Sports Sunday is brought to you by Nelson Auto Center in Fergus Falls. This is your livelihood, and success requires a seed partner that's just as committed as you are. Just like you, we're farmers first, so our values are rooted just as deep, and our goals are just as strong. Our team is ready to hit your fields, so no matter what each growing season brings, we'll get through it together. It's who we are. Thunderseed, first in the field. The specialists are so important because they're the ones that can take your team from average to great. The guys that have their specialized roles and understand them and do them really well, um, those guys are hard to find. And so when you have those guys that are good at what they do and believe in what they're doing, don't care too much about who gets the credit and want to go out and prove something, I think that that is probably the most important ingredient in a successful team. Choose the experts. Choose Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Peterson Farm Seed presents Ag Week TV every weekend. Ag News expert Shauna Olson, trusted meteorologist John Wheeler, and the expertise of the entire Ag Week staff will bring you the latest in Ag News, lifestyle, experts, tech, and trends. If it's important news to you, it's important news to us at Ag Week TV. Ag Week TV, delivering the complete ag picture every weekend. Hi everyone, welcome back live to Terre Haute. The Bison Media Blog pregame show rolls on with uh, our second guest. Second time he's appeared on the show. Last time was a bit lot chillier out in Fargo as we welcome <laughs> back NDSU Athletic Director Matt Larson, who has his roots in the Colonial. So I have to ask today, seeing college game day at James Madison, is that just... Get you upset that Stony Brook never got a shot to host? Well, I'll tell you, happy for them. I mean, and what a, and what a great turnout. I mean, their yeah. fan base really came out strong and, and put off a great showing. And, and that, to me, again, that's that defines FCS football. Oh, you yeah. know, I mean, we have some passionate fans at this level. And uh, and so really happy for them, Jeff Bourne, their AD, and, and a credit to, and I think just the success they're having this season. I want to talk, Matt, about the, you talk about the passionate fan base. I know you've uh, talked since the day one you've been here. This is two losses now, which there's, there's some spoiled people around here. 
what's been your email inbox like? <laughs> what, you know, what, what's been the, the what's been the, the talk out there? Well, you know, I, I think you always have the the one half of the one percent of the fan yeah. base that 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 likes to be sometimes the vocal the minority. <laughs> but uh, but I, I think all in all, I mean, our fan base has, has done exactly what I thought they would do. Is they've stepped up, they're supportive. Uh, I think I think they're more excited for Easton Sick than anybody else is. And I think an mm-hmm. opportunity to see him to com- him compete. So, you know, it's it's what I thought it was going to be that our, our fan base stepped up and they're they're here to support the Bison. Describe back home the shack. Every time I go up there, it's getting closer and closer to getting done. Looks like the indoor basketball practice facility is going to be open here in a couple of weeks. Where do things stand right there? Well, the good thing is everything's on schedule, and I yeah. think that's the most important thing in terms of having everything completed by next fall. But I think there's nobody happier probably than Dave Rich and Amarin Walseth <laughs> in terms of and their athletes who have been going off campus or kind of been you know juggling practice schedules to now have a home, and uh, it's impressive. It really is. We were in there just the other day, and the floor is phenomenal. The space is is what. You, what you hoped it would be and walking around their locker rooms all the finishes are in place and uh, and you know that's just one piece of it and then you walk through the rest of it and you see the office space you see the the amenities that the place is going to have in terms of really being able to service our student athletes so it's, it's exciting it's coming along great it's really I think the last one of the last pieces of the puzzle in the whole facility um, uh, master plan what is the master plan what's next you know what well, I think first and foremost like we you know we need a we need a softball facility that's, that's, that's yeah. representative of the type of program we have and so we're working on doing some things uh, out there because Coach Mueller's done such a great job and uh, so I think that's next and and uh, the bubble last year was a was a was a huge uh, impact on a lot of our programs you know down the road maybe a, a permanent indoor practice facility I think maybe uh-huh. that next thing down the road I mean bubbles have a shelf life and and so having something that we can say permanent and you're seeing that across you right know, over everybody's Midwest, almost doing South it Dakota yeah. State and UND yeah. and so I think that's you know when you talk about future plans capital projects that's certainly going to be one of them there's always a question I have to ask you and it's, it's about scheduling so how are we sitting for scheduling for two 2016. I know there's still an opening there. Uh, any progress made on that front? Yet? You know, we, we, the good thing is, is that you know, it's as, as scheduling ebbs and flows a little bit. There are still some programs out there that have openings. It's just trying to convince them to come to Fargo, and so. And Jeremy Jorgens and I have been working hard on that, and we have a couple of, I think, pretty good irons in the fire at this point right now. Which, which once we can get that one solidified, then that really opens up. Hey, now let's start working. Let's finish off 17, and, and from there on out. So, uh, we're still working hard to get that that opener, though. So you travel with Terre Haute, the football team, like you do, you know, every road trip. What did you see when the guys are gathered at the airport? What do you see when they're getting on the plane? What are they looking like? I think just focused. I, I think that's the biggest thing that I took that I took away from it, both in the airport, on the plane, in the hotel this morning. They're focused and ready to go. And uh, and I think that's where I think that's a result of the practices that they had this week. Really good practices, good energy. Uh, you know, a lot of guys stepping up into into leadership roles. And so and, that, and again, that's what you expect. You know, with when coming off a loss last week. And so I think our guys are focused and ready to go. Was it more? For shock that you saw from last week out of the game, especially then the news that Carson Wentz gets hurt, that it's it's a double whammy that this program and university hasn't really experienced in five years. No, but I would say, I mean, you know, looking around the locker room on Saturday after the loss, uh, there were some angry guys in there. And, you know, and the guys that have been in the program for a number of years, and no, that's not Bison football. And so, I, I, you know, I, if, if we were at other institutions, I'd be more concerned, but I think knowing the resolve and the, and the type of people that we have in our locker room, the type of people that we have in our, in our coaching staff, um, I think they're going to, we're going to be better because of the things that you have to overcome. And adversity is a big part of life, and I think our guys are going to take it head on this week. You know, you were an all-world receiver, right, at Stony Brook, and we get that straight. Uh, what, what do we need to see? What are some signs to look for in a freshman quarterback in his first start? Well, I think to, I think to get him involved early. I mean, I, you know, other than obviously handing off the ball and those things, but but he's an athletic kid. Get him involved early in some quarterback runs. You know, he hasn't completed a college pass yet. I think, I think getting him as comfortable as soon as we can, I think is going to be a real key for yeah. him. What was your best 40 time? You remember that? Yeah. I, actually, my it's best gotten, 40 it's gotten, time. It's gotten faster as years gone on. It was a 4 5 2. Wow. Yeah. Right. It was a 4 5 2, but that was about 150 years ago. <laughs> uh, That's not bad. Yeah. I want to ask also before we let you go the amount, this is not an easy trip from Fargo to Terre Haute, Indiana. The amount of green and gold here is really impressive. I am, and especially the, you know, I had a chance to talk to the group a little bit earlier today, and, and we have a group that drove up from, from North Carolina to be yeah. here this weekend, drove 10 hours. They're doing all the cooking today here at the tailgate. And again, it's just, for me, it, it illustrates that Bison Nation is not about the upper Midwest. We are all over the country, and, and our goal is as we continue to grow the brand is to, to paint the to paint the country gold. And so to see this great, this turnout, the Gold Star Marching Band yeah. made the trip yeah. down, and uh, we're going to have a nice, we're going to have a nice presence out here today, and I, and I think that's exactly what our guys need. Yeah, they called us two uh, two days after Frisco and yes, said, hey, well, we're hosting Terre Haute. Yeah, no, it's a great group. They were at Youngstown two years ago, yeah. and, 
it's just a passion group. They have lots of parties every week down in North Carolina. And, uh, and hey, again, no, no, no better fans than the Bison. We really appreciate the time. Thanks for doing this. Good guys, thanks, thanks, Matt. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Matt Larson, NDSU Athletic Director, giving us a few minutes here on the pregame show. We come back, we'll talk about Indiana State. The Sycamores come in at 4 and 2. This is a huge game for them as well. That's back right after the break here on the Bison Media Blog pregame show. Over 60 years, our focus has been you. A growing community needs a new source that grows with them. And you found that source in WDAY. Good evening, everyone. Our 6 p.m. newscast has been with you night after night. When the city comes to life or when news happens, you'll know. Dana Mock, Kirsten Keeley, out in the community, behind the desk. It's had no major issues with users viewing offensive materials. Two anchors you can trust. When the news hits, there's only one source to turn to. WDAY, the news leader. Peterson Farm Seed presents Ag Week TV every weekend. Ag News expert Shauna Olson, trusted meteorologist John Wheeler, and the expertise of the entire Ag Week staff will bring you the latest in Ag News, lifestyle, experts, tech, and trends. If it's important news to you, it's important news to us at Ag Week TV. Ag Week TV, delivering the complete Ag picture every weekend. Say goodbye to expensive window treatments and Saturdays filled with dusting. Minn Kota Windows offers blinds between the glass and select window styles and sliding patio doors. With low-E glass, they're even more energy efficient. They're easy to operate, have a clean, efficient look, and control privacy, light, and heat. And the best part is they're safe for kids and pets. Blinds between the glass from Minn Kota Windows. Midwest built, Midwest tough, guaranteed for life. Minn Kota Windows, windows for your where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Welcome back, everybody, live here on the Bison Media Blog pregame show, live from Terre Haute, Indiana. Big E rejoins us as we get set to talk about NDSU and Indiana. we got to talk about the Sycamores here because there is a football game that's going to happen later today. We talked about it on the radio show here just about an hour and a half ago. The Bison running struggles are really something that's come to light all season. And you, I hit the nail on the head, the best stat, I think, all year. The Bison haven't had a 100-yard rusher yet this season. Isn't that amazing? That all, the, all the running backs this program's had in the Division One era. So I think then the question is, everybody automatically puts it on, oh, the offensive line right. What's must the be the line offensive doing? line. Right. That's not the case. I mean, I, I think the head coach told us earlier this week when asked, hey, the offensive line's been fine. It's been the running backs. They haven't found that extra hole, that extra gear. I think the running backs are on red alert today. I and mean, they got to make a play. You know, you haven't seen them run in space very often. Yeah. You haven't seen them get in the clear. And I think this game, you want to help a freshman quarterback gain 15 yards once in a while. You're a great offensive line mind. Is it more running back or is it the old line? Probably a combination of both, but I, I think it's really telling that Chase Morlock's not healthy. He's not zipping through those holes like they expected. Yeah. And Lance Dunn's another guy. They just don't have those burst runs, and I think Lance Dunn and Chase Morlock, to a certain extent, were the two guys expecting that to happen. Now, Bruce Anderson looks like he may give him a little bit of that, but it's a true freshman. So how much are you going to lean on a true freshman? So I agree with Colpack. I think it's red alert for the running backs. And I think it's going to have to be by committee. There's no John Crockett in this group. And, you know, nor, nor do you expect Boy, to have a John Crockett I think, I think they want Bruce. I, they, they want, they want to be somebody the to be the guy. Yep, I, think I really so do. Well, I don't disagree, but I don't think Bruce Anderson's going to be John Crockett as a true Not freshman. Today. Maybe down the yeah, road. Maybe. but. Maybe. They still, over the years, have liked having the two backs set up. I think they maybe want two guys to emerge as the main guys and maybe do like a 40-40 split with that and sprinkle in a few other guys. All right, Jeff, Indiana State comes into this game. This is a huge game for the Sycamores as well, knowing full well what they have coming down the pipe. They're in 4-2 and two on the season. Matt Adam taking over for Mike Parrish has been really good this season. Gary Owens, their wide receiver, is a guy you're going to want to watch today. Eight touchdowns already at wide receiver. He's dynamic. What do you make of this team for Mike Sanford? Well, guess who C.J. Smith's going to yeah, guard today? Yeah, right there. It's going to be uh, Gary eight. Owens. He's, gonna, he's like the Jake Weineke, I think, yeah. in this game. 
But I, I, Matt Adams is an interesting quarterback. Coming into the season, everybody thought Zach Klein. He was a transfer from California. Yeah, he was going to be the guy. And, and when he went to Cal, he was all super everything with, <laughs> you know, 10 stars and recruiting you accolades love, everywhere. You love hating on, you love hating on that I stuff. Do. <laughs> because we, we all know what it tells it turns out. Yes. So anyway, Zach Klein comes to Terre Haute, and guess what? He gets beat out by a guy they recruited out of high school. Leonard Fournette was a five-star guy. I think he panned out. It goes he both did ways. Okay. It goes back. It goes both ways, Cole Pack. I just I look at this program and what where we the last time we were here, Shakir Bell quit the team. It was in shambles. They won one game last year. Since then, an FCS playoff win. They lost to Chattanooga in the second round last year, and they're full bore ahead that they might contend for another playoff spot this year. Well, two years ago, not everybody was on board. No. That was a they had some players from the former coach who liked that coach weren't on board of the new coach uh, that's the key i think this year yeah. and, and talking to people that uh, this team's all in on indiana state because when you come here and you we look at the facilities yeah. you know not that great worse than the missouri valley by a mile but what they do is they you know they have a nice recruiting area indianapolis Location. is an hour yeah. down the road chicago's not that far that way st louis two and a half hours away they they sell that, you know, that lo location. You can yeah. play near home factor, and I think they've gotten some pretty good kids. Curious to see how this game pans out here later today. We'll take a break. We come back. Update on the injuries. Obviously, is a big one for quarterback, but also at running back for NDSU. That's right after the break. It's the Bison Media Blog pregame show rolls on, and our Saturday selection still to come as well. This is your livelihood, and success requires a seed partner that's just as committed as you are, just like you. We're farmers first, so our values are rooted just as deep and our goals are just as strong. Our team is ready to hit your fields, so no matter what each growing season brings, we'll get through it together. It's who we are. Thunderseed, first in the field. Peterson Farm Seed presents Ag Week TV every weekend. Ag News expert Shauna Olson, trusted meteorologist John Wheeler, and the expertise of the entire Ag Week staff will bring you the latest in Ag News, lifestyle, experts, tech, and trends. If it's important news to you, it's important news to us at Ag Week TV. Ag Week TV, delivering the complete Ag picture every weekend. plays more coverage more sports stay ahead of the game get your sports fix with sports sunday sunday nights at 10 35 sports sunday is brought to you by nelson auto center in fergus falls the specialists are so important because they're the ones that can take your team from average to great the guys that have their specialized roles and understand them and do them really well, um, those guys are hard to find. And so when you have those guys that are good at what they do and believe in what they're doing, don't care too much about who gets the credit and want to go out and prove something, I think that that is probably the most important ingredient in a successful team. Choose the experts. Choose Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. The Media Blog Injury Report, brought to you by Sanford Orthopedics. Welcome back, everybody, on the Visa Media Blog pregame show, our Sanford Health Injury Report. Let's start first with running back Lance Dunn, who's not played the last two weeks. Here's Lance Dunn. will come back. First time since uh, injuring his leg uh, about a month ago, yep. or his hamstring. So I think he's ready to go. Quarterback, obviously, Carson Wentz with a broken wrist. It says 68 weeks, but we're under the impression that likely his season and career is done. It's possible. It's very possible. It's a slow healing injury. It's a tough injury. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, yeah. Brock Jensen was once ruled out, yeah, and he true came too. back. A couple of really interesting games today in the Missouri Valley we're keeping an eye on. Northern Iowa will play at South Dakota State later this afternoon. Big E, the Panthers are 2-4. and four. Another loss, and their season is done. Well, let's, let's, let's get something. We got our host here, Mark Miller, with some food to the side. Dom's been whining about not getting any food all day. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've, I've been working all day. It's good enough for college game day. Let's get some food in oh. here for Dom. <laughs> Wow, this is fantastic. Yes, look at the wow, look, look at that. Look at this. Yeah. Here, some coleslaw, wow. some mac and cheese, beans. That's true Thank southern you. mac and cheese. All right, well, that's that true from fantastic. the Carolinas. Thank you very much. All right. I can't eat on TV, it's not good form. But back to. You want to do a pick, actually? <laughs> 
We'll South Dakota State. <laughs> I'll, I'll go with you and I. I think they're more desperate. I think it's a good matchup for the Panthers, and they have to try to save their season. I like you and I, too. Yeah. I think their defense is really good. All I right. think they'll fat match up physically with South Dakota State. I got the Jacks winning at home today. They've been rolling along. I, I, despite the Bison game, they've been really good at home. Western Illinois and Illinois State for first place in the Valley. Western Illinois back in the title hunt after a, yep. several a five-year absence, but I think going in Illinois State's too tough I agree. on the road. I'm taking uh, I'm taking right. Trey Roberson. Yeah, I like the Redbirds here today too. Trey Roberson, Illinois State. Yep. I think they're they're primed to pick off Western Illinois. He's getting healthy too, and that's the scary part for the rest of the Valley. All right, on to the game of the day with North Dakota State taking on Indiana State. Of course, the Sycamores were the last team to beat the Bison at home until last week when USD went into Fargo and won. I'll have you lead off. What do you got? Well, I got this food here, yes. but it's not. there's nothing about food. I'm going to throw a metaphor out there. I don't know what's right. right what's here. that? What is this? Right here I have a pound of rocks. <laughs> okay. It is a metaphor. <laughs> for what the Bison need to do today. They need to pound the rock. They need to get back to the running game. Guys like Bruce Anderson, Chase Morlock, if Lance Dunn sees the field, King Frazier. They've got to get over 200 yards rushing, win the time of possession, help out the freshman quarterback. 24-21 Bison. I think they sneak it out. It's going to be a tough game, but they just have enough to win here on the road. You're cleaning this up. There's no, there, there's no time for that. I think Easton Stick is not the issue today. I think the Bison defensive line is the biggest thing. Can they get pressure on Matt Adam? Indiana State has allowed 25 sacks so far this season. I think Nate Tangway, Brian Schatz have to have a big game today. I think the Bison rally. I think they win today 27-21. You know, you know who else agrees with your assessment? I agree with that. Hold this. Oh, oh he's Dr. back. K. He's back. I didn't know he was. He, I don't know. He works on weekends. <laughs> he's Dr. J had Dr. to make another J house call house twice here. in one year. It yeah. hasn't happened since 2010. I'm exactly with you. It's got to be the pound the rocks. The running backs are on red alert. Is, is, I, this, I, is this Dr. J or the nutty professor? <laughs> like the costume changes every time. <laughs> We got messes here. Can I have a score? Can I give you a score? 24-21. All right, there you have it. You can, yeah, we got our food. We got rocks. We got Dr. J in the house. The game is coming up in a half hour. North Dakota State and Indiana State. It's exclusively live on ESPN3. We're back after the game with post-game reaction, highlights, all that kind of good stuff on WDAY. Thanks to Mark Miller and everyone from Carolina Tailgating for hosting us on Colpac and Izzo and on the Bison Media Blog pregame show. For Eric Peterson and Jeff Colpac, I'm Dom Izzo. We'll see you after the game. The Bison and the trees coming up at the top of the hour. The specialists are so important because they're the ones that can take your team from average to great. The guys that have their specialized roles and understand them and do them really well, um, those guys are hard to find. And so when you have those guys that are good at what they do and believe in what they're doing, don't care too much about who gets the credit and want to go out and prove something, I think that that is probably the most important ingredient in a successful team. Choose the experts. Choose Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine.